Hey guys, Jesse here, and welcome back to my Star Wars Rebels reaction series. Today we are moving on to Season 2, Episode 4. So last time, the Ghost Crew was sent to... So last time, the Ghost Crew was sent by Ahsoka Tano to find an old friend of hers that could have been a help to the Rebellion. Ahsoka was generally kind of ominous and vague to Kanan about who this person was, only that definitely needed to trust them. And that was because her mysterious contact was everyone's favorite clone, Rex. So yeah, we had Rex and two other clones, Wolf and Gregor, just chilling out in the middle of this desert planet in the middle of nowhere, keeping their heads down, staying off the Empire's radar. We had some fun bonding between everyone, except Kanan, who, for obvious reasons, isn't the biggest fan of clones. You know, maybe uh, saw his master get shot down by a bunch of them. Oops. And to make matters worse, and to kind of... And to make matters worse and also justify Kanan's suspicions on the clones, Wolf, in his panic, kind of contacted the Empire to rat out the Jedi. Which makes me upset because I'm a fan of Wolf. Wolf is one of those side clones that I kind of latched onto. I went from being super happy that he actually survived Order 66 to being very pissed that he's the one who you know, betrays our current main characters, so hopefully he'll be able to redeem himself. But yeah, we were left off on a cliffhanger, the Empire's coming to kill everyone. Who knows who they'll end up sending to kind of kill a bunch of Jedi. Part of me thinks that we might see the new Inquisitor that was hinted at at the beginning of the season, because the Empire at this point knows how much of a threat the Ghost Crew is, so I don't see them just sending a bunch of stormtroopers out to get them. But we'll see if we actually see, like, an Inquisitor show up. All in all, my takeaways from the last episode were it's great to see Rex again. That was that was the biggest thing, was that I'm just really happy to see clones again. And I don't know if Rex is completely out of this fight yet. I know at the beginning of the last episode he was talking about how it's not his fight, he's done enough. And that's definitely true. Every clone's done enough. I don't think any clone really has anything left to prove. And if they want to stay out of the fight with the Empire, that's on them. But I don't think he is done with that yet. Whether or not that's because he feels an obligation to Ahsoka, I think Rex is going to end up joining the Rebellion. Or maybe I'm just hoping because that means we would get a Rex-Ahsoka reunion, which I desperately want. Even if it's just them saying hi for five seconds. I don't like the fact that they haven't seen each other and who knows how long. I just want him to hug because we didn't get that in the Clone Wars finale. And I've always enjoyed their character dynamics, so. Because you know, shared trauma makes really good character dynamics. Also, I would want to see Rex interact with Kanan more and have that dynamic of someone who doesn't necessarily trust clones because of what he's seen and what he's seen them do, even if he objectively knows it isn't their fault. Because Kanan does know that the chips are a thing and that the clones weren't under their own control. But Kanan's not thinking about it in a very logical way because it's a very emotional situation. And even if you know that someone's being mind controlled, if you saw them kill someone who is very close to you, it's hard to just like forgive and forget. But I think there's some interesting conversations to be had between Rex and Kanan about shared trauma and how they both walked away from the war having lost almost everything. And I would love to see some conversations there or at least just hinting at that. So I really, I'm really hoping that Rex ends up tagging along at the very least. So yeah, let's just jump into season two, episode four. There's no telling when the Empire will get here. We've got to get off the surface. Well, the Empire's not our only problem. There's a storm coming up behind us. There's always the something. Before we take off, the storm Can't ever be simple. Problems. They are. Coordinates of every Republic base, separatist installation, pirate hideout, and smugglers dead in the outer rim. Plus a few Mandalorian bases that even they've forgotten about. That, that could be incredibly helpful. Sure you won't come with us? Please. You know, man, I mean, for old and gentlemen. Yeah, like I said, our war's over, kid. Say hello to Commander Tano for me. But the Empire's on its way, and they will find you. I want him to come along so bad. Well, they're here now. Mm. Just had to say that. Star Destroyer Yay. just came out of hyperspace. Got a power 
down so they can't scan me. Once I finish my repairs, I'll come get you. Good luck down there. <sighs> Sorry, buddy. Need you too. <laughs> <laughs> he was about to fight her on that. Better wolf. In him. No, Kanan has his reasons, but he's also acting like a little bitch. No, prepare for ground assault. Kels, you're gonna get your ass kicked again. You always do. Uh, sorry, um, I'm in your seat. Travis controls are over here on the left. The elevations, front. And then Anakin Rex betrayed it. Here. You hear that? Enemy contact. Point two four. Oh, that's not good. Mmm. Three wait, wait, ATATs. Wait, wait. Looks like heavy cannons and anti personnel blasters. I'm glad you guys are so excited, but those giant death machines are on their way to blow us to bits! Yeah! Wait, you're just gonna turn and run? Just like that? Well, if you've got a better idea, sir, now's the time. I thought you clones loved to fight. I do love a battle, but on my toes. What's the plan here, guys? They're turning tail. Oh my god, they're going into the store. Fire at will. Yes, sir. Storm be any better. Well, the storm will scramble the scanners. We'll all be blind. But a Jedi won't. Come on! Everybody inside! That's it. I can't wait any longer. <laughs> what the fuck, bitch? Why does it, it always seems like Chopper's cursing? <laughs> I love his little sassy little arms. We're not gonna be able to hide in this We're blind. They have a chance. Now we prove them wrong. All units, 30 degrees left, flanking turn. Yeah, Kellis can't really take any of the Ghost Crew on a one-on-one -on -one fight, but he's not exactly dumb. You don't always have to see something to know where it is. If you're willing to trust me, I can get us that shot. 
I always trust my general. I love that force theme. Prepare to stop now. Commander Wolf, circle left, double time. Oh, that's a little too close for comfort. Ooh. If what I'm sensing is right, we're surrounded. What? Well, can't you get them to fire on the, each other? Because they can't see each other, can they? Once we fire, we'll reveal our location. If we miss, it's all over. I'll take the shot. No, Ezra should take the shot. Uh, why don't you do it? Kane is right. We need one Jedi up there manning the cannon, and another Jedi down here to lead us out of this mess. You are the only ones who can see in this storm. Well, no pressure. Sabine, Better not miss, or you're all dead. Hey, kid. You might need that. And hang on tight. <laughs> Mm, mm, emotions? Rex was always a good big brother. Targeting scope's useless. I can't see it. So you have to feel it. You're not going to see it with your eyes. The bunker is there. Trust yourself. This is very Death Star Trench Run. Now you have two more you have to deal with. There's your opening. Not now. We're in the middle of an operation. Sir, the message is from Lord Vader. We've been ordered to immediately rendezvous with his shuttle. Yeah, you don't really want to ignore that kind of message. This is either really good or really bad. I, poor Callus. If they don't end up coming back, they just abandoned him on that planet. Get yourself moving. This is your only chance. What? We can't leave. They gave us back to the rebellion. The other part of that mission is to bring Rex back with us. We can't just abandon them. You're not abandoning anyone. We're covering your escape. Now move. Uh, nah, be careful. Don't be a self-sacrificing idiot. This is what we were born to do. Yeah, but you don't have to. We'll be back. Was that the clone theme? This might be it. At least we'll go down fighting like a clone should. I'm with you all the way, Captain. <laughs> um <laughs> I'm <laughs> Why am I crying? I'm gonna kill Rex. Right. Too bad about Captain Rex, but at least you got the intel. I'll rendezvous with you shortly. Copy that. Well, what are we gonna tell Ahsoka? Rex was her friend, even though he was a clone. I hate him when he's right. Guilt trip. I my problems with clones, but I don't want those men to die. Rex, you brave, stupid man. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Book him up.
<laughs> Ow. Oh, that poor... <laughs> that poor one trooper. Looks like we live to fight another day. Don't we always? Well, we do when we've got a Jedi leading us. Mm. God. Clones. Okay, yeah, what did, uh, did Vader want? That's an Inquisitor. Inquisitor? I thought Lord Vader was coming aboard. I wasn't aware that you, Lord You're... Vader, has sent me in his place. That's a good thing. But this unnecessary diversion may have compromised the success of Agent Callus's mission. I will succeed where you and Callus have failed. Mm. Will you? Will you though? I. <laughs> oh. oh. Commander. You got old. <laughs> Had to happen sometime, Rex. <laughs> it wasn't easy. It's still not. Nothing worth doing ever is. So yeah, that was season two, episode four, Relics of the Old Republic, also known as me getting emotional about clones. So it looks like Rex actually decided to come back with the ghost crew and possibly join the rebellion. I don't know if he's I don't know how much he's gonna get involved or if he's just there to say hi to Ahsoka then leave, um, but it looks like he might be joining the fight again. I can't believe I'm almost crying at two characters just hugging. Ugh. Emotions. I don't know, there's just something about that hug that just made me very emotional. Both these characters have come so far over the course of Clone Wars and now Rebels. Rex's little you got old. Ahsoka looks taller than him at this point, which... Maybe it's just because I was a kid when Clone Wars was first coming out, and I would have been about the same age as Ahsoka during that. And to see her as an adult and how much she's grown, it also just makes me sad to see how much Rex has actually aged. Because even though his body is like physically older than Ahsoka's, I don't think he's actually that old. I don't know how long it took clones to age out of like the training program and actually be sent off to war. Even if the aging's just doubled, he would have probably been younger than Ahsoka. And the fact that even though Rex was one of the lucky clones who was able to escape after Order 66, get the chip removed, he doesn't have as much of a life left. Everything about clones is tragic. Even the happier clones have such a weight of tragedy behind them. And they really show that with Rex. Because out of all the clones, that fought during Clone Wars. These are like the only three that actually made it out of it. And yeah, maybe there's like a couple clones here and there, but out of armies of millions, three, three survived it. And they're not exactly living super happy lives. And even if like the advanced aging wasn't a thing, they're not exactly living super happy lives because they can't really go out in public because they're clones. They have one of the most recognizable faces in the galaxy. So they have to live in almost complete isolation away from everyone else to keep themselves and others that they care about safe. And the clones that were stuck with the Empire afterwards were just kept around until they were no longer useful and then they were decommissioned, which basically just seems like a code word for put down. But there's something about decommissioned that that phrasing though, because it isn't retired it isn't they're not even acknowledging oh we're murdering people when they're no longer useful no it's decommissioned because that shows that the empire doesn't even see them as people they're decommissioned the same way old gear or old ships are 
But on a lighter note, it was good to see Rex again and seeing a little more of the old Rex than we got in the last episode. Because the last episode was kind of a Rex who'd given up in a way. And this was a Rex that still had that fire to fight. Rex has always been the older brother figure, either to other clones, but also to Ahsoka. And seeing him show that with Ezra and teaching him how to use the gunship and lending him his helmet because he knows Ezra likes old helmets and him just talking about Anakin because Rex is incredibly loyal. All the clones are, which makes the fact that they're being mind controlled to kill the people that they're the most loyal to even more heartbreaking. But there's something extra heartbreaking about Rex, who, who is incredibly loyal to Ahsoka and Anakin, even after all these years, and Anakin knowingly enslaving basically the clones, and that makes Anakin's betrayal not even of the Jedi, but also of the clones even that much worse. Because Anakin is betraying the clones' trust also. He is knowingly, he's going along with Sidious's plan of basically enslaving the clones in their own minds and forcing the clones to go through things that he knows that they would never do or never want to do for his own personal selfish reasons. But Rex doesn't know that. Rex doesn't know that Anakin's the reason that all of his brothers are either dead or still enslaved by the Empire. I have a lot of opinions on the clones and they all make me sad, so... I'm really hoping that Rex survives this show. He's been through so much and he survived the Clone Wars, so I really hope he doesn't end up dying in this show. He deserves a soft epilogue. Him and Ahsoka both. I, my hope is either Rex gets to retire, have like a simple life, relax on like some beach planet somewhere, or he ends up spending the rest of his days with Ahsoka and them just palling around and exploring the universe, helping people. I think the second one fits his character more. He doesn't really seem like the retiring kind. I just hope he doesn't end up being a self-sacrificing idiot like all my favorite characters are and jumping in front of Blaster Fire to save Ahsoka because that would suck. Besides for all the clone stuff, I think the next biggest thing is New Inquisitor. I don't know how well this one's going to fare because the first Inquisitor we saw was apparently the Grand Inquisitor, so it feels like we're just downgrading Inquisitors from there. Callus is slowly fucked up enough with the Gus crew that Vader's taken notice, and so that's not something you want. When Vader starts noticing your fuck-ups, your head is on the chopping board. It's funny, because Callus does seem competent at his job. He is not the bumbling stormtrooper type. He's just generally outmatched, because you can't fight a Jedi. You can't. No matter how cool your character is, if you put them toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Jedi, it ain't gonna go well. They're Jedi. They have laser swords and magic powers. And even though Cal seems to be a competent tactician and a pretty good fighter, you got gonna do against the lightsaber. So that's why the Inquisitors are a thing. But I don't think the Empire really cares that a fight's not fair. The Empire just likes results, so it's probably a good thing for Callus that uh, this Inquisitor showed up because now the blame, if things go wrong, can be shifted onto the person who is trained to kill Jedi and not the poor ISB officer. So it was amusing to me when the actual Inquisitor showed up and that one guy was upset that it wasn't Lord Vader, which is a dumb thing for him to wish it was because Vader shows up when you're fucked. When you fucked up real bad, that's when Vader shows up. You don't want Vader to show up. It means you're not doing your job correctly, and you're probably gonna get force choked. But yeah, we'll see what this Inquisitor brings to the table. He's not nearly as intimidating as the last one, so hopefully he's a little smarter or better with a lightsaber. But, uh, kinda doubt that. I have a feeling that the Inquisitors are showing up just so we can have lightsaber duels. Because having a lightsaber and not fighting with another lightsaber opponent isn't that engaging of a fight. So you always have to have an enemy that can have like something that can fight a lightsaber just to make the fights cool. But yeah, it's the same reason why they gave Pre Vizsla the darksaber. 
in the whole creation of the Darksaber was solely so Obi-Wan could fight pre Vizsla, and you could have a cool Mandalorian Jedi fight, but you kind of have to have something for them to use, because a blaster versus a lightsaber isn't that dynamic, and so you have to some give that character something for even ground, because lightsabers obviously are completely overpowered as a weapon, as they should be. So I think they're just introducing more Inquisitors, just so we can have lightsaber duels, because you can't have Vader show up and duel Kanan and Ezra, because that's not a fight, that's a massacre. So I think we're just going to be introduced to more Inquisitors so we can have enemies to fight. How many Inquisitors are going to be thrown at the Ghost Crew by the end of the series? As they continue to get better and better, I feel like the Inquisitors are going to be less and less of a threat. So that was my reaction to Season 2, Episode 4 of Star Wars Rebels, Relics of the Old Republic. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like this reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and keeps me motivated to keep making more of these. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!